అందరికి నమస్కారములు నమో నమ టుడే ఈజ్ అనదర్ గుడ్ డే ఫర్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ అస్ దట్ వీ హ్యావ్ మధుసూదన్ పెన్నా గారు ఐ విల్ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ హిమ్ టు యూ ఆఫ్టర్ రిసైటింగ్ వందే మాతరం అండ్ చాంటింగ్ ప్రార్థన నవ్ ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ కృష్ణ కుమార్ గారు టు రిసైట్ వందే మాతరం ప్లీజ్ సర్వేభ్యో నమస్కారం మాతరం వందే మాతరం సుప్రజ్యోస్నాపులకితయామిని పుల్లకుసుమితృమదళశోభి సుహాసిని సుమధురభాషిణి సుఖదాం వరదాం మాతరం వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం ధన్యవాదములండి కృష్ణ కుమార్ గారు థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ నావ్ దట్ ఇస్ రిక్వెస్ట్ గోవిందరాజ్ రాజ్ గారు టు చాన్ ప్రార్థన ప్లీజ్ సర్వేభ్యో నమ Let's start with gentle meditation. Close your eyes. Sit with your back straight. And focus on your breath. let us now chant om three times గణపతి హవామహే కవీం కవీనాపమ్రవస్తమం జ్యేష్ఠరాజం బ్రహ్మణాం బ్రహ్మనస్పత ఆనశృణ్వన్నూతిభి సీదసాదనం మహాగణాధిపత నమ ప్రణోదేవీ సరస్వతి వాజేభిర్వాజినీవతి దీనామవిప్రవతు ఓం శ్రీ మహాసరస్వత్యై నమ గురురేవ గతి 
ಗುರುಮೇವ ಭಜೆ ಗುರುಣೈವ ಸಹಾಸ್ಮಿ ನಮೋ ಗುರವೇ ನ ಗುರೋ ಪರಮಂ ಶಿಶುರಸ್ಮಿ ಗುರೋ ಮತಿರಸ್ತಿ ಗುರೌ ಮಾಂ ಪಾಹಿ ಗುರೋ ಜ್ಞಾನಂದಮಯ ದೇವ ನಿರ್ಮಲ ಸ್ಫಟಿಕಾಕೃತಿ ಆಧಾರಂ ಸರ್ವಿದ್ಯಾಂ ಅಯಗ್ರೀವ ಮುಪಾಸ್ಮಹೆ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನಿ ವ್ಯೋಮವದ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ದೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಅಸತೋ ಮಾ ಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾ ಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮಾ ಅಮೃತ ಗಮಯ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಮಾತೃದೇವೋ ಭವ ಪಿತೃದೇವೋ ಭವ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ದೇವೋ ಭವ ಅತಿಥಿ ದೇವೋ ಭವ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳಂಡಿ ರವೀಂದ್ರರಾಜ್ ಗಾರು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ನಾವು ಐ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ಲಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಮಧುಸೂದನ್ ಪೆನ್ನಾ ಗಾರು ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರೇಟ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಎಮ್ ಎ ಇನ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಪಿ ಹೆಚ್ ಡಿ ಇನ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ಡಿ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ಆನರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹಿ ಡಿ ಡಿಪ್ಲೊಮಾ ಇನ್ ಜರ್ಮನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಜಸ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ ವೈಸ್ ಚಾನ್ಸಲರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕುಲ ಕವಿ ಕಾಳಿದಾಸ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ರಾಮ್ಟೆಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನಾವು ಇಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೀ ಫ್ಯಾಕಲ್ಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಕಾಳಿದಾಸ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ರಾಮ್ಟೆಕ್ ನಾಗ್ಪುರ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಭಿನವ ಭಾರತಿ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸ್ ನಾಗ್ಪುರ್ ಕೆ ಕೆ ಎಸ್ ಯು and also is the ugc member of ugc committee foreign collaborations in sanskrit and other languages um so he has got a lot of administrative experience as i said he has been uh, a member of various uh, committees and councils and he has worked as registrar of the university during convocations and of course he has been vice chancellor uh, officiating and also as a charge and he is the chairman of NEP 2020 committee KKSU board of studies Veda Yoga and uh, uh, DYND KKSU university publications committee local enquiry committee university syllabus committee etc many committees like this and he is coordinator for various things like ugc non 12b one time catch up grant ugc 12b recognition and nac nac kksu and uh, during his time he got b plus plus in first attempt itself 2015 he is the local secretary of all india oriental conference 50th session nagpur in 2019 and he is the nodal officer kksu nodal officer in indian science congress mumbai session 104th session 2015 and uh, many things like that and he is the general editor of university research general 
university newsletter, university annual report, and Sanskrit books of KKSU. Languages known, he knows many languages. Among them, Sanskrit, Telugu, English, Marathi, Hindi, and German. Academic distinctions, he's been gold medal, gold medalist throughout. BA, MA, MA art and arts and faculty, Sanskrit department, and gold medal in PhD also. And he's the first rank in MA Sanskrit. And like that, wherever he is uh, taken part in education, he has got the gold medal. And he has got the international experience in Nepal, Canada, and Netherlands. And, uh, and he prepared many modern gadgets from the field of education and uh, awards, titles and felicitations are concerned. He got many and uh, there are about 19 uh, awards and titles he has got and he has published many uh, Sanskrit Mahakavyas, uh, uh, four of them and then uh, Lagu Kavyas also, 12 of them. And edited texts, he got about 16 of them. And Sanskrit to Telugu translation, 10 of them. And Sanskrit to English, about 10 of them. And Marathi to Sanskrit, 2 of them. And monographs also, he got, uh, he has done it for yoga, metaphysics. And uh, international and national conferences, international conferences, he has. Uh, attended 14 and national conferences and seminars 44. Like that, he has uh, been involved in many, many educational aspects and has been, as I said, the vice chancellor of uh, the university. So uh, without going further, uh, if you go through all the details, it takes uh, the complete time here itself. So I request him to Start the webinar, please. Thank you so much, sir. Hari Om Om Prano Devi Saraswati Vaje Bhir Vajini Bati Dhinam Vitryavatu Shruti Sam Alayam Parunalayam Namami Bhagavat Pada Shankaram Loka Shankaram Asmat Guru Bhyo Namaha Om my humble salutations to all the dignitaries present here and uh, my sincere gratitude to the organizers for having invited me to speak on such a wonderful topic. So I welcome all the other participants who are eager to know about our Ashtadesha Vidya. So the moment uh, the topic was communicated to me, I was uh, really thrilled that Ashtadasha Vidya, it's actually a very big, big topic, a very wide topic because Ashtadasha, 18 Vidyas, each one takes a lifetime to master. So such Ashtadasha Vidya are to be communicated, they are to be discussed within a short period of one hour or so, one and a half hour. So through, through this uh, lecture or webinar, we will be trying to understand our rich past. <clears throat> At the same time, the great contribution that our ancestors made to this Indian culture, Indian philosophy, Indian religion, and actually <clears throat> how they have created something called India, the Bharata Varsha. So the credit goes to such great uh, stalwarts and with all uh, great uh, honor to these great souls like Vyasa Maharshi, Valmiki Maharshi, Bharadwaja, Aryabhatta, Varaha Mahira, Charaka, Sushruta, Patanjali, and uh, Kanada, Panini. So all these are great souls. And uh, they are divine because they have given to us a great treasury called the Bharatiya Jnana, Vijnana. So therefore it is our uh, sacred duty to remember all these pure souls. And... Uh, uh, now, let us enter into the topic without uh, uh, wasting our time. 
so this is ashtadasha vidya and as uh, sanskritists i would like to draw your attention to the word vidya actually in sanskrit language the root vida it it is found in uh, four conjugations or four groups so accordingly it is uh, conjugated so vidyate vetti these these words are formed the verbs are formed from vida dhatu only the, from the same vida the word veda is also derived so thus the inherent meaning of this vidya is knowing becoming aware sometimes getting also obtaining something is also the meaning of the root vid vidru satayam labhe so several meanings are there so thus vidya is basically the word that gives the meaning of some skill some knowledge some information some technique so in any form it is actually education and when we attach the word ashtadasha to the word vidya we understand that in the olden days uh, the ancestors had uh, thought about some 18 different aspects of education and each one had its own importance and thus we understand that the just a minute ha huh. so i'll make it full yeah so uh, we understand from this uh, vidya that our ancient india uh, mostly spent time on developing creating and uh, promoting such kind of vidyas and that was unique to this land if we compare the india with that of other nations we we find very definitely that in other countries people uh, several other things that uh, very in in very few nations only we find uh, pursuits of this kind but in india mostly our people were engaged in exploring the nature around exploring human life trying to get into the core of human existence so all these made life beautiful thus the cumulative deposit of knowledge as we find in the shastra experience in various darshana beliefs religion values values are found in darshana shastra and uh, other texts also and most of our uh, epics and puranas they deal a lot with these values so uh, when a person is born as a human being automatically he is prone to several vices but some values are taught in our indian tradition these values actually sustain and uh, instigate us or goad us into a very prosperous society so values are required and in the absence of such values only a society takes a back step a society faces a kind of total destruction that we have found in other nations in most of the neighboring countries also we find that because of the because of the uh, absence of these values moral values human values so what is happening there we are a direct witness of that then attitudes meanings hierarchies religion then notions of time that which is there in jyotisha in almanacs etc then roles we find in the mahabharata and ramayana the different roles played by the various characteristics and the mutual relation and the affection they shared everything spatial relations concepts of the universe the concepts are found in puranas mahabharata how the uh, universe came into existence and before the creation what was there and what actually prompted the single reality to become many all these were discussed in our ancient texts and material objects as we find in the vaisheshika darshana sankhya darshana so this is actually the beautiful subject matter of all the darshanas shastras and epics 
then the difference between civilization and culture is when it is directed to the external it is civilization and if it is directed inward it is culture. so that kind of a difference people have drawn and uh, we also appreciate that civilization is more external explicit and culture is more internal implicit so this difference is there and all the ashtadasha vidya uh, have got something to deal with this uh, aspect that the internal culture how a person individually evolves and as a society how he evolves both these things are there and both the things are important especially when we try to understand the ashtadasha vidya so then all these vidyas all the culture and uh, civilization they rise up to spiritual levels so uh, very interesting that in our in some of the texts uh, very rude logician also spare some time to discuss the matter of ishvara he shares his ideas some people support some people deny but discussion is inevitable so this kind of spiritual dimension can also be felt observed in our uh, culture and civilization thus we we through the ashtadasha mahavidya we give importance to the dharma so it is after all adhato dharma jignasa so whatever the author may be writing whatever he may be pondering upon but ultimately the focus will be on dharma the ramayana mahabharata purana all these deal with the concept of dharma very subtle that's why unintelligible when it comes to uh, the definition of dharma though i have given um, many such definitions still vyasa maharshi himself says in the mahabharata though he says ahimsa paramo dharma but ultimately he says dharma is something which cannot be properly defined so such dharma what is that what are the dimensions of dharma and what are the implications of dharma how to truly follow dharma so all these did matter in the ancient society and the manusmriti also says dashakam dharma lakshana and we have chaturvidham dharma lakshana vedah smriti sadacharah swasya priyam vedah smriti sadacharah swasya priyam arthat atma priyam so how do you understand and evaluate dharma so the ancient text provide some solution for that saying that first the topmost authority in the matters of dharma is shruti shruti is non human verbal testimony and very typically in india we believe that the the verbal testimony is not always human human creation agama is human creation but when it comes to shruti especially the mimamsa shastra says that it is nirapeksho ravah nirapeksho ravah shruti so while defining shruti the mimamsa shastra says that it is nirapeksha that means that word which does not depend on other for its authenticity so generally we compare with the other sentences so when somebody says something we cross check we we ask him to provide some other uh, means like direct perception or somebody's uh, reasoning but shruti is such a sentence such a statement it is divine that it does not require any other authentication so thus shruti comes first then smriti smritis are the sayings of shruti only but when shruti are the non human 
direct divine revelations smruti are the human creations in a way recording the divine revelations so shruti smruti so when shruti were directly received by the vedic seers of that time they directly received the message of god those were the revelations and later when they taught the other disciples had recorded them and these recordings are known as smruti thus shruti smruti then third one is sadachara this is also important that in the taittiri upanishad uh, there in the upanishad it is said yadite vrutta vichikitsa va karma vichikitsa va syat etatra brahmana sammarshina yukta a yukta aluksha dharma kama syu te yatha tatra vartiram tvam tatha tatra vartetha esh aadeshah esh upadeshah esh vedopanishat etad anushasanam so it is very beautifully stated there that ultimately when you yourself are in a dilemma unable to understand what to do how to behave actually this was the state of arjuna also in bhagavad gita but lord him was himself there so it was a direct conversation with god and god had uplifted arjuna and the entire mankind but here all the people are not that for, that fortunate so when you have dilemma when you have problems life problems then you follow sado sadachara it is also dharma they said sadachara is nothing but what the elite behave or prefers to behave so it is actually the conduct of the elite in the society that is sadachara or we can say shishtachara who are shishta abhyupagata veda pramanya shishta the nyaya shastra also explains that the people who accept the unerring authenticity of the veda are shishta phala sadhana tamshe bhranti rahita that means they are such scholars that they clearly know what to achieve with the help of what that means the means and goal both are known to them such great wise people are shishta and their conduct their behavior their practice is also dharma then ultimately the fourth place is accorded to priyam atmanaha whatever is preferred by oneself atma priya but this atma priya is not independent the at thoroughly looked into by sadacharya smruti veda for example in some cases they will not be veda then at least to smruti vakya you should follow if smruti vakya is also not available but still if there is sadachara one has to follow that sadachara keeping aside his atma priya if the first three are not available then only he can think of atma priya so this is chaturvidham dharmasya lakshanam so thus our ancestors had given a very broad definition to this dharma and this dharma we all know occupies the first place in the purushartha because the society sustains stands on four important ingredients of social life dharma artha kama moksha so the dharma occupies the foremost place dharma is the sacred duty the divine duty the cosmic order that every creature not only humans every creature has to follow and it follows also and this dharma gives all strength to all the other artha kama moksha these are the purusha artha in the dharma. artha is earning money making a living kama is fulfilling desires but we observe in all the other nations that these artha and kama they become very really predominant that they forget the other sacred commandments but in india in bharatavarsha we are very lucky that our ancestors had given 
some commandments so that the artha kama will not be totally loose they will not be uncontrollable because we know from the bhagavad gita that kama yesha krodhesha rajoguna samudbhava mahashano mahapapma vidhi enamiha vairinam so lord krishna said that kama and krodha are both rajoguna and they are very detrimental therefore one should keep full control over them and that's why when artha and kama become strong the bharatiya rishi they had given to dharma and moksha to support these two and to instruct the society teach the society that okay we also understand that artha and kama are uh, ineluctable but still if you can give strength to these artha and kama by dharma and moksha your life will not your life will not be meaningless you can live you can live a very complete purposeful life and for that dharma and moksha are the two attachment given to our society and in the same society we find that dharma chatur chatushpada in the bhagavata also in the uh, second skanda fourth skanda he has given that that tapaha shaucham daya satyam with slight difference the four padas are accepted so these four padas padas means the four quarter of dharma on which dharma stands very strong first is tapas tapaha taddhi tapas taddhi tapaha this is the taitri upanishad it is the sacred discipline tapaha is sacred discipline tapaha that's why in the patanjali yoga shastra also tapaha swadhyay ishwara pranidhanani kriya yoga so tapaha occupies the first place again in dharma and that tapa is bodily physical tapa psychological tapa and verbal related to speech that means we all human beings are supposed to follow this kind of tapa that physically we do some tapasya mentally also we are supposed to follow some discipline it is also tapasya then verbally that means chanting the stotra chanting some mantra studying some sacred text this is also tapaha so this tapaha is very important that's why in the patanjali yoga shastra vyasa bhashya it is stated that tapo moolam hi yoga ha ultimately the entire yoga experience is based on tapas and tapa is given such place in yoga shastra followed by shaucha shaucha is keeping oneself pure at least in the empirical world we are supposed to keep ourselves pure physically mentally verbally but uh, what we generally do we are influenced by the external stimuli and therefore we come out of our rules and restrictions and fall prey to all the unnecessary things and therefore the shaucha gets disturbed we may we may go for shaucha physically every day taking bath brushing teeth all these things are done but what about mental shaucha so that is also important then daya daya karuna peediteshu sanubhuti so this kind of daya in the form of karuna is a part of the uh, chitta prasadana in yoga shastra daya so how compassionate you are how you hear others feelings also how you respond to others feelings and all these is dharma then satya satyam the vyasa bhashya and yoga sutra says what is satya yatharthe vaam manase satyam satyam properly described defined in the yoga shastra it is being true to yourself verbally and mentally that means you walk manas yathartha you try to keep your mind and your speech true not deviating from reality that is satyam and that's why in the vedic rituals also they say anrutat satyam upaini 
daivim vacham prayachami they take the oath in the beginning of the sacrificial uh, that ritual that now i will walk into the satya now i will utter only the meaningful purposeful useful words so with this oath only they get into the ritual now i come to the core topic of the webinar that ashtadasha vidya we know that there are some vidya shastras some 10 shastras the shastra are there then 32 vidyas are mentioned and 64 kalas as we find in the vatsayana kama shastra artha sang artha shastra and in other puranas also we find the names of these all the 64 kala 32 vidya 10 shastra but today we will be uh, trying to understand only the 18 vidya so how they developed see we understand there that many of these vidyas developed as the fruit of their uh, pursuit as the fruit of their pursuit our ancestors had uh, made lot of tapasya and as a result they got the vidya and each uh, maharshi had developed the vidya had actually uh, added flavor to the vidya then he had added that to the next generation and thus throughout generations the vidyas have come down to us we will see what are the vidya but some of the vidyas developed out of man's uh, natural uh, quest for knowledge natural uh, quest for entertainment ambition survival so all these contribute to the development of the vidya ultimately this we have to keep in mind that when one vidya has developed it means the society requires the people of that particular society understand the importance of that let us compare uh, some 30 40 years back there used to be pagers but now you don't find pay uh, laptop or notebooks or uh, the phones so actually few years back some 30 years ago we did not expect that it would take a different turn similarly the corona has, has also taught several things to the mankind so things are evolving and thus several vidyas will be added several vidyas will modify themselves only to fit into the situation and this is quite natural thus entertainment skill survival ambition all these actually are the uh, the sole reason behind the development of such vidyas so 18 vidya sthana in the uh, nayamanjari of jayanta bhatta and in other some some of the other texts also we find chaturdasha vidya sthanani the upavedas are not added therefore chaturdasha some people say veda 4 vedanga 6 then then purana nyaya mimamsa and the itihasa some people add some more also thus chaturdasha if you add the four upaveda then ashtadasha 14 plus 4 now we are talking about 18 vidyastha or vidya sources of knowledge or sources of sciences they comprise both the primary and secondary sources from which we can know dharma righteousness duties and responsibilities see uh, the vidyas are found even in the modern society but the base of the vidyas if you get back to the base you find the smriti grantha again if you go for the base of smriti you find the shruti does the shruti is the ultimate base of all the vidya so here you have the four vedas six vedangas four upavedas so here you have 14 
and other scriptures sankhya yoga nyaya all these so this we need to know as an indian because it is after all knowing about our own history our lineage our own forefathers what they had contributed what kind of life they had lived and what quality they had maintained if at all they maintained we should know that and we are carrying their genes and therefore i find that it is our sacred duty to get to our roots know and appreciate them and whatever good we can find we should imbibe this is exactly what taitri upanishad says yami asmaka gum sucharitani tani sevita dhyani no itarani we are supposed to take only such good things from the past unfortunately in the two states of telugu we find that people are going after hatred mutual hatred so instead if such people really study and understand the source of our knowledge our wisdom our science i think they can also appreciate and those are the vidya sthana and these vidyas have uh, greatly influenced the ancient society that even today in the annals of indian history these are recorded the various uh, cultural literary philosophical contributions that our ancient indians had made are indian history therefore we also should study and uh, understand them there what actually provokes a person to go for the vidya first is natural curiosity this curiosity is very common even in the animals you find immediately after the birth the animal will be searching around will be making efforts to understand the things around to accommodate itself in that particular situation and immediately becoming a very competent one because ultimately it is survival of the fittest therefore the animals also have this natural curiosity they will be exploring their surroundings and man is a social animal and as uh, like any other animal man also has this curiosity he wants to observe respond differently so as a human being when i look around when i look at the sun look at the sun rising when i look at the sunset the moon the twilight morning evening twilight the beautiful star embedded sky the 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 breeze wafting the fragrance all these so when i observe automatically i respond and this response can be in in many ways but when i want to express myself i need some uh, very competent medium and thus the ancient human being had responded to whatever occurred around him and uh, those responses became his expressions and thus the various vidya sthana came into existence so first of all it is jignasa jignasa that means a desire to know whether it is dharma jignasa brahma jignasa shesha jignasa ultimately the eagerness to know and when he when one is eager to know something automatically he becomes one with that the yoga shastra says that when you put 100% of yourself on a particular object you become one with that that he says in the first pada yoga bhashya vishwarupapannam chittam vishvakaram bhavati it is said there that when chitta is put on the vastness of the universe then mind automatically becomes vast that's why our upanishad also says brahma veda brahmaiva bhavati 
Mundaka Upanishad also says that when a person realizes Brahma, he becomes Brahma. How? Because knowledge is nothing but becoming one with the object of knowledge. But if it is just a jignasa, it cannot be a siddhanta. There is difference between a thought and a thesis. And human endeavor is to travel from thought to thesis. A normal thought, it cannot become Shastra unless you give perfection to that, unless you uh, uh, give some specification treatment to that, then only that particular thought will become thesis. So it is improvisation. For that we require Tattva Parikshanam. In the Ashtadasha Mahavidya, we have some, some Vidya dedicated to Tattva Parikshan. Tattva Parikshana, verification of fact, examination of the reality. And the examination is done with the help of Nyaya Shastra, with the help of other techniques. Then Siddhanta Parikshana. And ultimately when you are convinced of the efficacy of a particular idea, you automatically make a theory. And that theory is Siddhanta. So, Siddhanta is the final conclusive theory. So, it started from Jijnasa and it has settled down with Siddhanta. So, the Jijnasa should take one to Siddhanta. That is the purpose of our Vidya. What are the Ashtadasha Vidya? Here you find that first Rigveda. Of course, now the world has accepted that Rigveda is the only most ancient intellectual record of human pursuit. You can say that it is the literary record of human intellectual <coughs> pursuit. So, beyond Rigveda, <coughs> Uh, we haven't gone so far because no literary uh, record is available. Though archaeological uh, records are somewhere scattered in a scattered form available, they claim that in uh, Mexico, Brazil, etc., they are available, they say. And they also claim that they actually belong to a period far back uh, than Rudveda. But we all understand that when it comes to the matter of text as a text, if you compare, no other text comes close to Rigveda's time. Some people say it is about 10,000 years back, before Christ, 10,000 10, BC. But our Indian tradition says that the Vedic time is Anadi. We cannot uh, assign a particular human time to this divine revelation because the Vedas appeared in this particular creation but before this creation also the Vedas were there. They will be there and only the right person who has developed himself spiritually can receive the Vedic knowledge. All the other depend on the text. So there are two aspects of the Veda. One is as a revelation Veda and other is as a text published, printed outside. Rigveda belonged to a very ancient time, followed by Yajur Veda, Sama Veda. These four are the first Vedic texts, Samhita. People say after Rigveda it was Atharva Veda, then Sama Veda, Yajur Veda, because uh, about 1880 mantras of Samaveda are mostly drawn from Rigveda. And the Rigveda, the original, consists of about 10,550 richa. And Yajurveda is a mix of both prose and poetry. But in our tradition, in the Chandogya Upanishad, Narada, Sanat Kumara Sambada, and in other places also like Mundaka Upanishad, Atharvana, Angira Rushi, Rushi, 
we find that rigveda yajurveda and samaveda this is the order then we have then we have the vedanga veda anga anga means supplementary auxiliary texts that which actually augment that which actually help help a person understand the veda veda anga anga means anga is upakaraka so that which helps so the six enumerated here or enlisted here they actually stand a person in good stead regarding the understanding of the four vedas each veda has four samhita brahmana aranyaka upanishad so when it comes to veda each veda has four samhita brahmana aranyaka upanishad so upanishad comes after the three therefore ante bhavati so people generally say vedasya antima bhaga vedanta that is upanishad this say upanishad ha brahma sutrani so each veda has these four the classification was made long back rigveda ruchaha where the rik mantra are dominant it is rigveda when yajurshi yajurveda yajur mantra are dominant it is yajurveda the difference between these two vedas is that rigveda mostly deals with the various stotra stava stuti stotra so you find right from the first agni stotra all these are the prayers to various gods you may ask in other vedas do we not find such kind of stotra but we find mostly the same mantras repeated the difference is that in yajur veda we find the exposition of vedic rituals which is not found in the rigveda yajur veda we find darsha purnamasa chaturmasya jyotishtoma sapta samstha they say in the mimamsa they are the sapta samstha some dravya yaga some pashu yaga some soma yaga they are mentioned in the yajur veda then sama veda sama it comes from sama balance harmony sama veda it's very important veda gita also veda naam sama vedosmi he says and that sama veda actually puts rigveda mantra to music so the same mantra is sung according to some rules there are many such uh, mantras in the sama veda atharva veda that deals with all worldly things like if you have any body disease if you have hair problem if you have uh, psoriasis problem if anybody has any other problem so for all these problems some remedies are suggested in the atharva veda there are krishi sukta bhumi sukta prithvi sukta even unmada sukta krumi sukta the microbes such things are found in the atharva veda the microbes now we talk about microbiology but the microbes were observed and uh, something is stated in the krumi sukta in the atharva veda also but now what is the relation between these and the vedanga here we should be very careful that when veda is talking about dharma what kind of dharma then the mimamsa shastra has discussed at length and decided very assertively that ultimately dharma is nothing but performance of whatever is prescribed by the scripture it is dharma yagadireva dharmaha it's it is said in the mimamsa text that dharma is nothing but yagadi why yagadi because it is prescribed by the shruti veda pratipaditah 
So that should be Veda Pratipadita. Then it becomes Dharma. Okay. Then why these six Vedangas? The problem here is in the Vedic context, when you mispronounce a particular word, it does not give its meaning. That particular word will give sometimes a contrary or an opposite meaning which will give adverse result. To common man, these words may appear as simple words, but in the Vedic context, these words are so divine that the accent is very important. For example, take from the previous slides only, Satyam, Satya is a word but it, it can give two different meanings depending on where you put stress, <coughs> whether it is on the first syllable or the last syllable. Satyam, Satyam, like Jnanam, Jnanam, Jnana, Adi Udatta. So you, you can variously pronounce the mantra, but the result will depend on, our, on your pronunciation. So, first thing is, you, you should know the pronunciation. How each word is formed and to be pronounced. That is the first text, Shiksha. So, the Shiksha that talks about the places of articulation, ways of pronunciation and the combination, all that. Then, okay, now you take each letter, you learn the pronunciation, good. But as a word, when words come together, they actually form some combination. This is known as Sandhi. Then various words come together to form one Samasa compound. All these things are taught in the Vyakarana Shastra. So, if we really want to understand the Veda, we should first understand the accent and pronunciation from Shiksha. We should know how words are formed, words are connected, how to get the sentential meaning that is from Vyakarana. Then, okay, you find the words, sentences, everything, but these are set in a particular meter. So the metrical division is known as Chandas. Prosody, Chandog, Chandas Shastra, we say. Then this Chandas Shastra will help us identify exactly what God is intended there, etc. Then we have Nirukta. Nirukta is etymological explanation of each word. See, till this Chandas, you can mechanically reproduce, repeat the utterance of the mantra. But when it comes to the understanding the meaning, you should know Nirukta. So Nirukta deals more with the meaning part of the Vedic mantra. All the other three deal with more with the pronunciation part. Then Jyotisha. Actually in linguistic context, Jyotisha has no role to play. But still, when it comes to Vedic ritual, once you have understood from the Vedic text that the uh, Vedic sentences are exhorting the humans to perform something, some ritual, Jyotishtoma, Agnishtoma, Agnihotra, something. Then, at what time? What is the muhurta? When to perform that particular ritual? When is it good or bad? So, these things are decided by the Jyotisha Shastra. Jyoti means star. Then Kalpa, Kalpa Sutra, Kalpa Shastra, it actually comprises of the Shulva Sutra, Shrauta Sutra, Dharma Sutra, all these together, that is Kalpa Sutra. Kalpa means actually, so when a person understands that the Vedas ask him to perform a ritual, Okay, I am convinced that I should perform a ritual because I have understood from the Veda. But second step, when to perform, I have understood from the Jyotisha that I, should, I can perform that. 
uh, this and this time. Now, how to perform this particular point? What to perform? When to perform? How to perform? And the last question, how to perform, is answered by the Kalpa Shastra. How to perform step by step, the modus operandi, the procedure is given in the Kalpa. So after that, we come to the other Vidyasthana, Purana. 18 Puranas are there. But in our lifetime, we can read at least one, like Vishnu Purana, Agni Purana. Each one is encyclopedic in nature. For example, if you study the Vishnu Purana, you find that the ancient uh, Raja Vamsha are mentioned there. The Indian geography is mentioned there. The uh, Indian political boundaries are mentioned. Culture, civilization, language, festivals, rivers, mountains, philosophies, literature, great saints, great gods, great mountains, everything is found in the Puranas. So thus, the Puranas actually the heart of India. In no other country you find such literature, vast literature, about 8 lakh verses. Then we have Mimamsa. Mimamsa is the science of interpretation of Vedic sentences. How the Vedic sentences need to be interpreted? What are the rules? How to get the meaning? All this is the subject matter of Mimamsa. Then Nyaya. Mimamsa, Nyaya Vistaraha. Nyaya means reasoning, logic. Then we have Dharma Shastra. Dharma Shastras are actually the books of conduct, law and order. They are Dharma Shastra. So till this you find the Veda, Vedanga and Shastra. And last four, which actually complete the number, the Upaveda, Ayurveda, Dhanurveda, Gandhara Veda, Artha Shastra, some people say Sthapati Veda, but four Upavedas. And now we'll see in detail, when it comes to the Veda, the Veda was a single Shabdarashi, Vedo Nama. Ekaha Shabdarash he in the Bhasha it is found. But Saha Chaturdha Vyakarot Veda Vyasa Maharshi he for the first time analyzed the content of these Vedas and accordingly he had separated all the Rugmantra, called them Rugveda, all the Yajush, he called them Yajurveda, then other other. So this classification of the Veda was done by Veda Vyasa Maharshi. Jagat Guru in real sense. Then he taught Rigveda to his disciple Paila, Yajurveda to Vaishampayana, Samaveda to his student Jaimini, Atharvaveda to Sumantu. Then those people also had taught that particular branch of Veda to other and thus it had spread. Thus we have out of several Shaka, now uh, only very few shakas are uh, remaining. They are actually available. They are extinct. Other, other, all the other shakas are now not available. Now, when, when it comes to Rigveda, some five branches are available. Shakala, Bashkala, Ashwalayana, Shankhayana, Maridukya. Yajurveda, very famous in uh, Telugu, Telugu states. Taitriya, we all belong to Taitriya, Krishna Yajurveda. But there are other, Maitrayaniya, Vajasani, Shukla Yajurveda, Kapishthala, Kathaka. Samaveda, once it had 1000 branches, but now only three are available. Jaiminiya, Kauthuma, Ranayaniya. Similarly, Atharva Veda, now only two are available, Pippalada and Shaunaka. 
So the uh, Undako Upanishad, Mandukya Upanishad, they all taken from the other Veda only. Samaveda, Chandogya Upanishad, Kenu Upanishad, they are taken from Samaveda. Yajur Veda, Katho Upanishad, Taitri Upanishad, from Krishna Yajur Veda. Ishavasya Upanishad, Brother Arani Upanishad, from Shukla Yajur Veda. Similarly, Aitareya is taken from the Rig Veda. Thus the Veda Shakas were there. In all the Vedas, the gods were spoken of. They are eight Vasu, Ashta Vasu, Ekadasha Rudra, Dvadasha Aditya. So when you when you combine these, some 31, Indra 32, Prajapati 33. So in the Brahadarani Kupanishad, also in the Yajnavalke Samvada, we come across this episode in which all of them ask the number of gods. So from 33 crores, 33 lakhs, 33,000, 3300, 33, 3, 1. So thus the number gets reduced and ultimately it is the Brahma, the single god, they finally proclaim. So, but the, uh, the expansion of that same energy, actually it was self-expression of the energy which uh, uh, which appeared in the form of the other gods so all the gods actually are the part of the same single consciousness brahma this is vedanta then we have the deities some are the deities of earth parthiva Agni, Prithvi, Brahaspati, etc. They are the Uma. But there are other gods, Antariksha Devata, Indra, Vayu, Parjanya, Rudra, Marut. Then Swarga Devata, Varuna, Mitra, Savitru, Surya, Pusha, Aditya, Vishwe Deva, Ushas and Ashwini Devata. So, when we say Mukkoti Devatulu in Telugu, it doesn't mean that there are three crore only gods in three categories. So thus, gods appear in three categories according to the Vedic mythology. Only you find an expansion in the other texts. And three, koti, koti means the category or the group, mukkoti, three groups. Then we have the first of the, after the Veda, the Vedanga. Among the Vedanga, the first is Shiksha, and as the Taitri Upanishad says, Adha Shiksham Vyakya Syamaha Varanaswaram Matra Valam Sama Santana Ityukta Shri Iksha Dhyayaha. So the Shiksha Dhyaya makes it very clear that the Shiksha Grantha are mostly the texts on pronunciation, accent. That's why they start with the Varna. Varna means the letters or you can say morphemes. Then Swara. Swara means accent, pitch, intonation. Matra. Arthat, how much? Like Kraswa uh, Dirgha Pluta, Kraswa Matra, Dirgha Matra, Pluta Matra, etc. Then you have Bala. Bala is how much you stress on that? This is known as prayatna in the Paninia system. Yatno dvidha, they say, yatno dvidha, bahya, abhyanta rascha. So that yatna is bala. Then sama, sama is samhita, medium pronunciation. Then santana, santana is expansion. So all these deal with the pronunciation of the letters and we have major shiksha texts like panini shiksha on the rigveda and ajurveda basically it is a laukika shiksha grantha but we find it useful to understand the uh, linguistic uh, matters of the rigveda also vyasa shiksha for the krishna ajurveda yajnavalkya shiksha for shukla ajurveda Naradiya Shiksha for the Samaveda, Mandukya Shiksha for the Atharveda. 
So these are the Shiksha Grantha. But recently, from the north uh, part of India, we have got a book published in which about 21 Shiksha Grandhas are compiled. But earlier, only very few, about nine Shiksha Grandhas were known. But uh, because of the recent publication of all the Shiksha Grandhas at one place, we are now convinced that there are other Shiksha Grandhas, about 21 in number. Then, after Shiksha, we come to the Vyakarana. Vyakarana is actually, in, in all senses, division. Separation is Vyakarana. So, what does Vyakarana do? It actually helps us understand the rules of separating words. For example, if it is uh, strainam, strainam, so the Vyakarana helps us that it is trinam samuhaha. That means many ladies at one play, place is trinam. Hastikam. Hasti means elephant. Hastikam, condensed one. Group of elephant, herd of elephants. But Vyakarana says, Hastika has come from Hasti. Hasti means elephant. So this way Vyakarana actually analyzes the word into the base, root, the conjugational suffix, the prefix and suffixes, all that. Therefore, it is known as Vyakaranam. Then, in the Vyakarana, uh, though Panini Vyakarana is very famous, we find that Panini Vyakarana also drew inspiration from 10 Vedic Pratyakhyas and about 15 pre-Paninian grammarians. So, Panini had studied many of them. He was so influenced by them and he had created his own Shastra, that is Ashtadhyayi Panini Vyakarana. But the contribution of the uh, contribution of his predecessors cannot be ignored because we have good names there officially Kashyapa, Gargya, Galava, Chakra, Varmana, Bharadvaja, Shakatayana, Shakalya, Spotayana, Senaka. Many of these names are found in the Ashtadhyay itself. In Ashtadhyay, we come across like Lopa Shakal Yasya, Avam Spota Yanasya. So, names are taken. And some of these names are found in the Nirukta also, like uh, Kautsa, Shakatayana, Bharadwaja, etc. So, thus, about 85 pre Paninian grammarians can be identified. That before Panini also, there were many grammarians who worked on Sanskrit language and uh, created their own grammar method known as like uh, Spotayana, like Shakatayana, like Katyayana, etc. But Panini had studied all of them and he found the necessity to create a, such, a, such a compact science of grammar which uh, can accommodate several rules, meta rules, at the same time, which can maintain brevity. So that kind of Shastra he created. Then we have the Chanda. Shiksha, Vyakarana, then Chanda. Chandas, uh, when it comes to Vedas, the Vedic Chanda was written by <coughs> Chanda Sutra of Pingalacharya, 2nd century BC. And Chanda comes from Chadi. Chadi means to cover, to um, entertain. Chadi means Allahada, means uh, cause joy or blissfulness. So when it comes to Chanda, uh, Kavikantha Ganapati Muni, he used to say that Vedic Chanda means that particular one which actually hides something within itself. 
so when some particular chanda of the mantra is there so we should not think that it is only the count of the letters but it is actually hiding in itself some secret about the god and he himself had uh, explained the renuka jamadagni uh, that uh, that particular episode why renuka had called that uh, parashurama 21 times and how parashurama had, had uh, massacred the kshatriya dynasty 21 times so he says all that secret is hidden in the chanda so when we try to understand the chanda we can understand the deity hidden in that the devata and chanda are so close thus rishi devata chanda all these three are very necessary in our indian tradition before we start the study of the vedas so they say ajnatva rushim devatam chandascha without knowing these three if anybody makes any attempt at understanding the veda it will be futile waste and the chandas are primarily given here as gayatri 24 letter ushnik anushtup trishtup jagati brihati pankti these are the names of vedic meters like utpala mala champaka mala sisa kanda etc in telugu then we have the nirukta text as i told you of nirukta is a etymological explanation of vedic words that is really a huge contribution you cannot imagine in other nations especially during that time some uh, 6th century bc before panini yaska maharshi belonged to a period before panini and you just imagine 6th century bc how were the other nations what were they doing what intellectual uh, contribution they have made what intellectual great things they have achieved so naturally we have to appreciate that it was india india alone which was reigning supreme and which really lived the life to its full yaska maharshi was a great uh, uh, rishi who had given to the world the science of etymology etymology that means breaking the word into units for example dakshina dakshina hasta yaska maharshi says dakshina means right then how do you say dakshina hasta he says because dakshina right is for daksha daksha means skillful so dakshina is apt adept skillful similarly he says uh, shakha shakha means branch why he says and kha kha means akash space sha means shete sleeps that which extends into the space is shakha he said similarly uh, simha yaskacharya says simha why we call simha as simha he says it is opposite it is actually himsa himsa opposite simha himsa means violence similarly tarka tarka means krita tarka is actually buttermilk majjiga why because from curd it is churned and whatever is got it is krita and people people started saying krita 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 tarka so it changed it is varna vikara sometimes varna viparya also so that etymology he had given and his great contribution to modern linguistics is he divided language into four nama nouns akhyata verbs upasarga prefixes nipata indeclinables so in sanskrit language all these four are very important ingredients and out of these only the uh, sanskrit language is framed now we know jyotisha very big topic ocean like shastra <clears throat> there are three broad categories samhita natural astrology effects of planetary position whatever is natural and very surprisingly varaha mihira aryabhata and bhaskaracharya 
they were such great intellectuals that they had measured the distance between earth and sun earth and other planets also and it comes very close to the modern calculation for example <coughs> bhaskaracharya had calculated the earth circumference about 40000 km and the modern one it comes very close to that and whatever modern mathematics has given in that time maybe 5th or 6th century bhaskaracharya had given the same calculation one two eclipses exactly solar eclipse lunar eclipse all that he had measured had given the the rules to measure that and even today the panchanga are created from that calculation panchangas and in panchanga the date time everything is clearly mentioned so this is samhita jyotisha then hora hora means planetary position and its effect on humans horoscopic hora at at uh, what moment we are born when we were born what was the uh, position planetary position all the planets where were they and what kind of signals they give to us etc then ganita is there mathematical astronomy this is calculations of planetary paths other astronomical matters like spherics etc so in the ganita also we have three siddhanta fundamental text tantra uh, this is kali yuga the beginning of calculation in siddhanta srushti is the beginning of calculation karana this is uh, day to day day to day uh, usage the karana so all the pancha anga are there pancha anga the five uh, components of calculation they are there we have number of uh, texts like garga jyotisha garga samhita garga hora parashara hora shastra jaimini sutra saravali brihat samhita brihat jataka daivajna vallabha varahamira aladipika mantrishwara hora sara prithvi yashas sarvartha chintamani very famous uttara kalamruta one kalidasa ganaka kalidas tajik nilakanthiya very famous nilakantha prashna marga and dashadhyayi by govinda bhattatri so this is jyotisha and this jyotisha the, the importance of jyotisha in uh, vedic context is i told you when people are at bay uh, very difficult to understand when to perform a particular ritual <coughs> what is the auspicious time then the jyotisha helps them it says this particular moment is free from all blemishes rains will not be there it will not be very heat my sir much heat will not be there and that particular moment is good then people understand that is the muhurta and they perform good uh, rituals or ceremonies so thus providing an auspicious moment for the performance of various rituals is the subject matter of this jyotisha shastra then we come to the kalpa i told you kalpa shastra provides answer for the question how how to perform so karma kanda there are shrauta sutra shrauta sutra these are the main corpus relating to the use of shruti in ritual correct performance of the rituals how many days each day what to be done when to wake up then what i am supposed to do second day third day fourth day if it is a five days ritual one day ritual thousand years rituals are also there they continue in the family so dirgha satra are there there the modus operandi or the mechanism or you can just call the procedure the procedural details are given by the kalpa sutra shul shrauta sutra then shulva sutra shulva means the cord the rassi tadu so the shulva it actually measures the distance between the uh, three agni kunda vedika each agni kunda means agni vedika like uh, gapati agni ahavani agni dakshina agni so what is the distance between two vedika and what is the uh, length width everything of that particular one how many bricks 
must be taken for that. All this is explained in the Shulva Sutra. Then Grishya Sutra. Grishya Sutra are very useful because they uh, give rules for the rituals like wedding, birth celebration, name giving, Namakarana, and coming of age, puberty, Rajaswala, Ashaucha, etc. Dharma Sutra, we know that Dharma Sutras are the text. They deal with the custom, ritual, duty, and law. So some of them are personal, some of them are social. And thus the Kalpa Sutra helps us understand the procedural techniques, nuances of the ritual. Then we come to the Upaveda, which is Ayurveda, which has so many sections like Kaya Chikitsa, general medicine. Then uh, Kaumara is there, Bala, the pediatrics, Graha. Psychiatry, then Urdhvanga, like the upper torso of the body. Shalya Chikitsa is there as found in the uh, Sushrut Samhita, surgery. Damshtra, toxicology. Jara, Jara is anti-aging, rejuvenatory uh, therapies. Then Vrisha, male and female infertility and their treatment. There are wonderful books. About uh, 32 uh, impurities are found in the male body. Vandhya Jeevana was a book uh, printed. So belonging to the 18th century. But the writer says, Garas Ram Sharma says that in Vandhya Jeevana there are 32 impurities in the male body and therefore infertility occurs. These are shown in the Ayurveda text. Very famous are the Raga Samhita. Sushrut Samhita and Bhela Samhita. The Bhela was a Rushi who got the Ayurveda knowledge. Some people say it belonged to a very later period. May not be earlier than 15th century, some people say. Then in the Sushrut Samhita, how they have developed the topic and considering the human health and longevity, they have treated these. Sutrasthana, Nidanasthana, Diagnosis. Sharirasthana, symptoms, chikitsasthana, treatment, kalpasthana, whatever medicines are to be prepared, uttara tantra, later care. So thus, uh, our ancestors had uh, studied the Ayurveda and made their lives very healthy and uh, contentful because Ayurveda had supported Efficacy, there is no doubt in that. May not be for all the diseases, but many diseases are cured by. Then we have the Dhanurveda. This is archery. In Agni Purana, there is a section which deals with uh, warfare techniques. Similarly, Bruhat Shangadhara Paddhati is there, written by one Shangadhara. 15th century text. You find Bowman. Then Jya, then the Guna, then Bana, Sayaka, and other. Both the hands, we have seen in the Bahubali. So, with both the hands, they shoot arrows. That technique, all these are taught in the uh, Shangadhar Paddhati. Then we have Aushanasa Dhanurveda, 16th during the time of Akbar, it was compiled. Then 17th century, there is one, one Vasisht, Dhanurveda Grantha. All these Granthas, uh, they are Upaveda actually, but they deal with uh, warfare, especially the archery. So in Dhanurveda, we find five training divisions, five types of weapons. So warriors like Padati, elephants, Gajadala, cavalry, infantry, wrestlers, so, there were Pada, Dala, Gajadala, Turangadala, Radhika, then Maharadha, Atiradha, David. And weapons also projected with machines like arrows and missiles, thrown by hand, spears like that, and cast by hands but retained, like loose, permanently held, held in hands, like sword, 
you cannot throw it away and direct bare hands hands themselves so such uh, warfare were taught and last is the gandharva veda actually i am not competent enough to uh, elaborate that particular one but i just introduce it is a sanskrit scripture describing the theory of music and its application uh, in physics medicine ma magic so we know from the shastra that vadya geeta nritta were three arts vadya geeta nritta vadya all instrumental geeta all vocal and nritta all dance so these were the performing arts as they developed sangeeta became a distinct genre of art in a form equivalent to contemporary music perhaps uh, by 6th century bc only developed because in nirukta yaska nirukta we find some terms so therefore that was there and later bharata natya shastra had elaborated many of these and uh, last few years back manavalli ramakrishna kavi had uh, composed he, he had compiled all the technical terms and he had written a big book bharata kosha so bharata kosha is really great contribution and there you find all the technical terms taken from many uh, texts on music dance instrumental vocal everything so this is upaveda thus we find the entire corpus of knowledge the veda upaveda huh? then shastra all these actually are uh, mutually complementary their aim is to make the human life a very enjoyable one one purposeful one two and with the help of which the human being can make uh, his living that means he can he can uh, go for his survival so in some <coughs> vidya we find the survival techniques in some vidya we find the aesthetic aspect to the human life thus all these actually make our life rich this is the contribution of ashtadasha vidya so with this i stop here i think it is the last one there are two types of sound ahata anahata and this basically deals with ahata gandharva veda uh, in uh, vocal and instrumental uh, but uh, for the vocal also they need the anahata practice and uh, in the north they regularly practice at 4 o'clock they practice the omkara very deep breathing and omkara for a long getting to the anahata also thus ultimately we come to the basic purpose of the of all intellectual endeavors asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotir gamaya mrityor ma amritam gamaya from the brahadarani upanishad i conclude here thank you so much namaste dhanyavadam landi thank you so much it is really a, uh, a knowledgeable informative session we had today thank you uh, sir only so covered all the basics you know what is required to be known to a person who thinks that he follows sanatana dharma uh, thank you so much and uh, we will take a question answer session sure sure sir yeah. i request all uh, to raise your hands i have one i have one simple question, question sir one minute thank you sir one minute uh, who is that uh, who is trying to talk lokanadham sir he says lokanadham but i didn't unmute anybody uh, and did i uh, no so we got meeting no. okay uh, first you know somebody like a samson uh, sm who is this samson can you i am unmuting you good morning sir uh, can you introduce yourself 
Yeah, Namaskar Vandi. This is Rajeshwar. Okay, please tell you where it is. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you so much for uh, detailed explanation. Uh, so I'm not sure which book you followed. I don't know. One of the book published by the Vedas from the Kanchi Matam, they have similar explanation of the topics which you covered. So I have two questions. One question is, uh, before uh, slide Siksha, right? There was a slide. Uh, that slide, uh, uh, Devas from the intermediate space or some where you mentioned there, there you said Rudra. What is the difference or among the Shiva, Rudra and Ekar Shavitras? Actually, it, was, yeah, it is not for the first time that we get such questions. Sir. In the Chandogya Upanishad also, the mm -hmm. Rishis inquired, Actually, okay. what is Rudra? Then they said, Ekadasha Rudra are the prana, they said. So the huh, all the uh, ten indriyas and one manas, all the pranas are rud, prana vai rudra, yat arodita rudrasya rudratvam. So they have explained that ultimately you, if you co if you want to correlate with uh, the prana that is existent uh, around us, that itself okay. enters into the body and that is Rudra. And what is Shiva? In the in the Rudradhyaya, Namaka Chamukam of Krishna Yajurveda, Taitriya Samhita, so they have mm -hmm. said, uh, actually it, it begins with Shiva only. And, Correct. Uh, like, uh, sorry, Namaste Rudra Manyava Utohota Isha Venama Rudra only. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you enter into that, it comes to Shiva. So we Correct. find that Shiva is the aspect. Rudra is the element. So, Rudra, if it is prana, it can be ghora and aghora. So, aghore e pyo athaghore e pyo ghora ghora tare So, the prana can be uh, giving joy or it can be taking away joy. So, thus ghora and aghora are the two aspects of the nature. One aspect is in the prana, another aspect is in the agni, another aspect in the vayu. So, thus they had... Uh, uh, they had uh, realized the things around. And, okay. Huh, Rudra is slightly negative aspect. Shiva is purely auspicious. This two. Yeah. Right. Gora Rupam and uh, Agora Rupam. Agora right. Rupam. Correct. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Second question is, Sorry. when somebody is chanting the any any you know any scriptures you know anything like huh. somebody is chanting then how i can identify the chandas that means there are some properties <laughs> which will tell us when x is chanting uh, let's take uh, mahanarayana upanishad or arunam or something uh, as you said gayatri mantra and uh, some of the mantras they come with the chandas the meter how we can identify what well, we, we, which text you subscribe or what is the best way so that it will help us the, the moment I'm able to identify somebody's chanting it will help me to chant properly. So you, first thing you got, is, you got my question, right? Yeah, yeah. The first yeah. thing is Thank you. that uh, Chanda Shastra they say about 8 lakh Chandas are there but 8 lakh? Very, oh my huh, God. Yeah, hmm. very famous. In the Vedas, mm -hmm. the Chandas are reduced and they say all permutations, combinations like Raga in Correct. the Gandharva Veda. Yeah. But Correct. here, uh, some basic Chandas, we can identify them on the basis of the number of letters. The letters Let 32, huh, if it is 32, it is Anushtub only. If it Anushtub. is 24, it is Gayatri. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and for that, we, re we need to know the sentence correctly. For example, Bhur Bhuva Suvaha, okay. Tat Saviturvare in Nambhargo Devasya Dhimahi. So each one we should count and get to 24. So then it will be Gayatri. Other will be Ushnik, Jagati, Pankti, uh, mm -hmm. all other varieties are there. So these Correct. things uh, they are found in the uh, Vedic Sahitika Itihas by Jayadev, Jayadev Ji. So he has written Jayadev. in Hindi. Uh, the details oh, are Hindi. even, uh, even for they had published Vaidik Swara Prakriya. So one chapter uh -huh. is there. Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Andy. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. sir. There is one question in the chat box. 
it is our natural curiosity to know our religion, culture and uh, heritage. Why are we losing it? Yeah, yeah. We also have the pain. Losing. See, some people are striving and trying to retain that. But uh, social compulsions are there. See, for example, my daughters, when they, when they are going to uh, convent, when they are going to missionary school, so they say there that you are not supposed to put tilaka, kumkum, no bangles, no uh, chain, etc. Nothing. So they are used to this. Similarly, so many uh, Hindu children, they are actually deprived of, the, of some of the practices. And we only when we grow up, we understand the importance of that value of that. And we either have an intellectual understanding of that or an emotional bondage that we get always connected with that. So we practice. Now I can I can boldly practice whatever I like. But in my childhood, I was also influenced by some of the uh, people around that uh, it is uh, uh, it was it was projected like that that all these things are nonsense. So even today, the mental, that means the psychological, moral and spiritual values are there, but only few people reach to the understanding level. They understand the value of them. They practice. Others, they are down below the level. And that's why they say, no, no, no such levels. And they just prattle. They just brag something. And they, such, such many people are there in the society especially in the media, that everybody takes the media, like uh, YouTube, like WhatsApp, Insta Instagram, everything. And they, have, they, they actually, they are not studied people. But they just, whatever comes in their mind, they just uh, prattle. And because of that, many such people get influenced and they also start uh, doing such things. So that is the problem. But I think we some people, come together, do something like this within our limitations, then I think some people will join. If not today, tomorrow. And uh, Prabhakar sir's efforts are for that purpose only. Okay. Today, we come together. Tomorrow, 100 people will come. The, that, that will continue. Education system should change. Yeah. Education system should change. Education system should change. Ultimately, whatever has come down to us traditionally, we should understand. People criticize without understanding. That is the sad story. Okay. Uh, there are some people who wants to talk. Uh, first, there are some questions in the chat box. Uh, I think we will take chat box questions. And understand Vedangas are associated or linked to Vedas. Are they related to Upavedas too? No. Only Vyakarana is related, but all the other are related to Vedas. So the Vedangas are primarily for Veda, not for Upaveda. Okay. And the next question is, is there any date for uh, first ever Shruti of Sloka of Rigveda? <laughs> this is the date question which I think we will avoid this because there is no end to this. Uh, we, who had taught that first ever sloka to whom and where? Yeah, it's actually it was a revelation. Agni Sukta Agnimi Ile Purohitam Yajnasya Deva Vrutvijam Ota Aram Ratnadhatamam With that Rugveda started that was the first mantra but mantra was not taught to anybody Nobody learnt it. It was actually revealed to a sage. But later, Veda Vyas Maharshi had given that to Paila. Okay, I think that is right. Uh, we will go ahead with uh, Ra Rajagopal and Garu. Oh, namo Namo Acharya. Namamsi, sir. Ah, you are there, my brother. Yes. <laughs> if you are talking, you, if I am not there, how it can be possible? <laughs> wow. How are you then? Very fine. Improving a lot. So excellent. One more, uh, uh, what you call, reminiscence. Yeah. I will say it is a reminiscence instead of saying a recitation. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I uh, just uh, 
I have to add to your this one. What I want to say that Rudra, somebody asked about the Rudra and the Shiva. But they say that Rudra is not Shiva. This is what the detailed explanation has been given in some of the books. The Rudra means they say that it is some sort of a, means the tears or something. It is a more of a negative energy that you have explained very nicely. Mm -hmm. And uh, my this one is that uh, Gandharva Veda that Upanishad has it come be a post. Uh, the uh, samaveda yes sir definitely from samaveda that's to me because music and uh, this one samaveda it is related. Related. Uh, yeah yes and one now i want to just what you explained very nicely i would like to add a little bit on that one they say that uh, when the gandharva this one samaveda uh, is been introduced and it was discussed and all thing they say that it has got it separates between the sound and the music by which the animals can be controlled there was a lot of discussion on that one example the krishna plays flute and the complete cows and they can come near them the snake charmer Shri plays Shri that Mag <laughs> magudi what we call in tamil mm -hmm. magudi what we call i don't know in telugu what they call that for snake charmer they use no so they Mahasura. said that uh, uh -huh. so that also they discussed about that one and they as uh, as a scientific person what i would like to say it is nothing but the resonance and the uh, the frequency modulation <laughs> Actually, we put it as the, the frequency of the waves. Even uh, I think many of you may be aware that our previous Shankaracharya, he said that when he was severely sick with high fever and all those things, he called the doctor from Chennai. He thought that he was going to get treated for this high fever. He said, no, no, I have not called you for treatment of my fever. You sit here, I am going to take bath and come back. And then he started reciting the Vishnu Sahasnama in the correct tone. And mm -hmm. after the recitation was completed, the fever has reduced and it was normal, BP, everything was normal. Why I want to still bring it here? That is the Gandharva where a lot of implications has been sold and this has been now pra really practiced now in Western countries. I was in Australia, they practice this one now. Because they say that by home and all those things, we get the, what you call the sickness and the ailment, it gets cured very fast. That is what the immunity develops. So, these are the things wonderfully has been told in Gandhavan. Yeah? You have covered, yeah, gave you a very panoramic view of the complete, all the things. Otherwise, I was surprised that how you are going to cover such a 18 Vidya. It was, I, I was really, I was su really surprised, but really hats off to you wonderfully. The way you have uh, taken away all the things and comprehended and the essence you are given. And really, and that is uh, my younger brother, Mr. What you call <laughs> Madhusudan Ji. You the, your name itself is the Krishna, no? The essence, the person who gives the essence of Veda. <laughs> so, really. And uh, to the audience, I would like to say I am a student of uh, Madhusudan Penna. I did my MA from KKS University, and the immense contribution by Madhusudan Ji and his team was so, so nice. The one of the best of the best university ever I interacted. I interacted with many universities, but KKSU is to my heart, which I will never forget. And the credit goes to our my younger brother, Mr. Madhusan, who calls me always as my, my I call him as my Anuja. He say my brother. So like that, we are all so nice family. And really wonderful talk. Wonderful. Very nicely you are comprehended and the you, essence has been delivered. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Now, uh, maximum of us not have taken Gurukula Siksha for us, how much time it takes to learn Nirukta uh, Vakarana to do Vedic translation? Nirukta and Vakarana. Ah, both. Yeah. Say so actually, Vedic Vakarana is different. Even Panini Acharya has given uh, some part of the Ashtadhyayi to explain the Vedic uh, rules. But pure Vedic uh, grammar should be learned from Pratishakya Granthas. And uh, uh, even if you study Panini, you cannot entirely deal with the uh, Vedic, Vedic text. It is better that you study the Vedas with the help of Sayana, Mahidhara, Uvata, some Bhashyakara, so that you can get an idea. And uh, simultaneously, you can refer to Nirukta text, but don't go for independent uh, study because it is endless. So you take a 
Veda, for example, you want to study Purusha Sukta, Sri Sukta, some Nasadiya Sukta, some take uh, Sainacharya Bhashya and Nirukta, then refer to the relevant portion of that, then you may understand it. Okay. Uh, how much time it takes? Uh, any, any idea? Generally, traditionally, sir, for each one, four years. But if they uh, take few suktas, because 10,550 mantras of Rigveda, 1885 mantras of Samaveda, with all the bhashya means it takes uh, traditionally to learn all those by heart, some 10 to 12 years, but at least uh, four years. But if they can take some portion of the Veda, like some suktas, Agni Sukta, Varunu Sukta, some Mantra Pushpam, Durga Sukta, or Agni Sukta, Vishnu Sukta, so, if they take these and try to understand these with the help of the Bhashya and Nirukta, it will not take much time. Okay. Uh, could you please share the recording of webinar? In this we do all webinars. I'll send it to you, sir. Huh. I'll yeah. send it to all, you. All webinars are recorded and uh, they are shared in the YouTube uh, channel called uh, Veda Samskriti Samiti. If you type on the YouTube search Veda Samskriti Samiti, you get all of them. Uh, I'm unable to unmute. If you want to talk, you please uh, raise your hand because there are some people who want to uh, talk. Uh, I'm a female learning Rudram. Can I learn? This is the reason behind, uh, uh, what is the reason behind women should not learn uh, Veda? Uh, okay, Chapandiji. What is it? Huh. So I have replied to her, but uh, for the sake of all, all other listeners, I would like to say that uh, traditionally chanting Veda is not permitted, but in the Veda, we find the mention of many Rishikas, female Rishi. So uh, only the Dharma Shastra Granthas are restricting because of some physical limitations. But nowadays, many ladies have come forward. They are also learning Vedic Suktas, Veda Mantras and big all India level, national level Vedic congregations are also frequently held. Therefore, it is left to that madam, you may get inspiration from other female uh, uh, chanting persons. Uh, you may also become a Rishika. <laughs> okay. Now, Prabhakar Rao, uh, please. Yeah, my questions are very simple. Sir. Uh, I, I always get some doubts when when we are category. We have given eighteen names. Yes. In that eighteen names. Where should I put itihasas? Huh. Out of it eighteen is, names. Actually, uh, in some, for example, Ka, uh, Kautilya Arthashastra, when he talks about the Vidyasthana, he says Anvikshiki, Trayi, Varta, Dandaniki, and Trayi only he has taken three Vedas. But Jayanta Bhatta, he has taken uh, 14, including the Itihasa. So, in this particular list, uh, Veda, Vedanga, then the Purana Itihasa, then come other Shastra. So Purana and Itihasa can be combined. To me. Combined. Because yeah. so I, though the I nature can is. Different. Itihasa and Puranas, along with Puranas. Right? Uh, itihasa and Purana form okay. one then, particular category. The next question is. Sankhya, Yoga, and Vaisheshika, three darshanas you left out. You take no three darshanas. Mimamsa, Nyaya, and uh, this thing. Haan. In the ancient days, especially in the Kautilya Artha Shastra and the ancient texts, they considered Sankhya Yoga as one, Nyaya Vaisheshika as one, and Mimamsa and Vedanta only one, Mimamsa. So by the word Mimamsa, they refer to both. By the word Sankhya, they refer to both. By the word uh, Nyaya, they refer to both. That's why in the Bhagavad Gita also. Okay, Nyaya, Sankhya, Vaisheshik, he... that means Nyaya and Vaisheshika can combine. Ah, okay. From 13th then, century, they uh, can combine. Vaisheshika and Yoga both are left out. Now. The Sankhya and Yoga both are left out. Where should we put, put them? No, they, these actually, uh, one word Yoga refers to both. But Yoga was not given in your 18 list. Yeah, he, this is according to one uh, text I have followed in which there is, <laughs> okay. Huh, uh, okay. there are several other lists also. So that's what I see when I am when we are telling some of 18 means what are the 18 these things will 
questions will come forward. Where uh -huh. this should then stop at Chaveda. Opaveda, you are not included, stop at Chaveda. So yeah, in the place of Gandharva, go. some people hmm. take Stapatya. Oh, instead of Gandharva, they say Stapachiveda. They take Stapatya. And in Stapatya, we have not, all not the Astra verses. Ah, some people. Uh, no, uh, sorry. In the place of Artha Shastra, some people take Stapatya. Uh -huh. Then all the Maya Matam, Samarangan Sutra Dhara, Manushale, Chandrika, all these texts they quote. Okay. So when we are telling about Sanadharma course, when we are taking Ashtadasa Vijas, these things will come in picture to tell the students which are where they will go. When we are giving uh -huh. a manual already course, these things. So that type of uh, clarification is to be required to them, given to them. That's why I ask this question. Achha, ah, okay. lecture, That's good. Really. Excellent lecture. I am thankful to you for accepting uh, our invitation and doing this. Uh, Thank you uh, so much, sir. It is long course. awaited, actually. <laughs> <laughs> long, awaited. Ah, long awaited. And I need more your more association with us and uh, respect to our Vedavani journal. I am Vedavani with you, sir. Please, I am with please, you. <laughs> yeah, please uh, encourage the students to write more and more articles and uh, research articles and we have got ISS in number also. Ah. And we need more and more research papers on this for publication. Sure, sir. Sure. So, till it comes to the light, I need your support. Okay. Vijay Uda Kupal Chaya. Namaste, sir. Myself, Vijay Upadhyay. I am from Odisha. Namaste, sir. sir. Thank you very much for your kind this sharing this knowledge with us sir my one thing i want to know sir in the e, rig veda sakha you have given details about e, five sakhas sir mm -hmm. so i want to know about that last that sakha which is spelling m a r i b u k e y c t can you please e, pronounce this word sir which one in the rig veda yes sir sakala vas Vaskala Ashwarayan Sankhayam in the last one, M A R I D U K E Y C T. Yeah, Maridu K. They said. Sir, Maridu K. Oh. I want to know the exact reference of this Sakha, sir. Is this the tradition exist or the text available or any reference? Yeah, uh, in the Vedic Sahitika Itihas, uh, Brihat Sahitya Itihas. So in uh, Jaydev also you find it. And uh, uh, Balde Upadhyay also, he had written on these uh, shakhas of uh, all Vedas. But sir, actually I have gone through this book, sir. But uh -huh. for the first time, actually, I heard this word, this Pada. That's why I want to know more about this. Again, I will refer that Acharya Balde Upadhyay. Wait one second, see. Yeah, that's, that's true. Sir, one more but, uh, thing, sir. As I know, uh, Shakala, yeah. Bashkala, Ashwalayana, Sankhayana, these are very famous. And one Aitareya, famous. Aitareya is also there. Yes. Okay, sir. Actually, this uh, word first time I have seen, sir. That's why I am yes, yes. quite eager to know more about this, sir. Sir, one more thing that you have given a timeline of Upaveda. Uh -huh. You have given 17th century, 16th century. I want the exact reference, sir, from where you have quoted this time, sir. Yeah, you, you can search for the uh, book like uh, Brihat Shangadhar Sangita. So you, you search for that. If you can get that particular one, so you, you can get the time also from that. For example, okay, 15th century, Akbar's time and uh, a particular book was written during that period. So this is the information we get from secondary sources. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, now, Samsung and uh, Jairam Gar, I think he wants to talk again. Let us give him the chance. Okay. Good this um, Namaskar Mandi again. Rajeshwar here. Namaskar. Yeah, ladies, due to hormone effect, all nature would do Veda Mantaru. Kani Kuni Sukhtal Upanishatalu, ladies could have drasta hi manakandicha. Okay, 
కరెక్ట్ అదే ధర్మశాస్త్రం ఒప్పుకున్నప్పుడు వాళ్ళు ఎలా మనకి భ్రష్టలై మనకు అందించారు నాలెడ్జ్ ని అంటే వాళ్ళు ఇంకొకటి అన్నారు వేదాలు ఇది ఎప్పుడు రాశారు అగ్నిమిలే పురోహితం అన్నది అది ఎప్పుడు రాయడం అంటున్నాడు అది ఎప్పుడు ఉంటుంది వేదం ఈ యుగం అంతమే మళ్ళీ కొత్త యుగం మళ్ళీ అది ఉంటుంది అది మనకు ఎబిలిటీ ఉంటే మన దృష్ట అయి తీసుకొని నెక్స్ట్ జనరేషన్ కి అందిస్తాం లేత లేదు ఇది ఇవి అపౌరిషేయాలు అంటాం కదా అవి ఎప్పుడు ఉంటాయి ది ఆల్వేస్ ఎగ్జిస్ట్ యూనివర్స్ లో అది టు ఆన్సర్ సంబడి సో ఇది ఈ క్వశ్చన్ నాకు లేడీస్ కి అంటే వాళ్ళకి ఆ జిజ్ఞాస అనేది ఉంటే వాళ్ళు డ్రెస్ చేసి ఇచ్చారు కానీ వాళ్ళ అక్కడ నాలెడ్జ్ ఎలా వచ్చిందంటే ఇప్పుడు ఈ చందస్ ఇవన్నీ కాంపోజ్ చేయాలి కదండి నువ్వు ఉత్తగా చేసింది కాదు కదా దానికి నాలెడ్జ్ ఉండాలి కదా గురుకులాల్లో సార్ అప్పుడు అందరు కలిసి చదవడం ఉంది గురుకులాల్లో వాళ్ళ తండ్రుల దగ్గర చదువుకునేవాళ్ళు సో చాలా రేర్ గా ఎప్పుడైతే శంకరాచార్య లాంటి వాళ్ళు ఆ శంకర అంటే బాల్యం నుంచే డైరెక్ట్ గా వాళ్ళు బ్రహ్మచర్య నుంచి సన్యాసం అయినట్టుగా ఆడవాళ్ళు కూడా డైరెక్ట్ గా సన్యాసంలో వాళ్ళు ఎప్పుడు అధ్యయనం చేసేవాళ్ళు బ్రహ్మజ్ఞానులు సో వాళ్ళు అదే పనిగా అధ్యయనం చేసి గ్రహించారు కొంతమంది ద్రష్టలు అయ్యారు అంటే ఇప్పుడు విరుద్ధంగా ఉంది కదా అంటే ఇప్పుడు మనకి నేర్చుకోవడానికి లేదు అని చెప్పే కొన్ని స్కూల్స్ ఉన్నాయి నేర్చుకోవచ్చు అని చెప్పే స్కూల్స్ రెండు రెండు స్కూల్స్ ఉన్నాయి సో దీంట్లో అటు అంటే వాళ్ళకు వాళ్ళకి జ్ఞానం అనేది ఉంటుంది వాళ్ళు నేర్చుకున్నా నేర్చుకోకపోయినా వాళ్ళ ఇంట్లో ప్రాక్టీస్ వాళ్ళు విని 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 వాళ్ళకి ఆ జ్ఞానం అది అది అబ్బుతుంది అంతే కావాలనుకున్నా అంటే వాళ్ళకి శ్రవణంలో ఉంటుంది కాబట్టి జ్ఞానం ఆటోమేటిక్ గా అబ్బుతుంది అబ్బినప్పుడు వితౌట్ దేర్ నాలెడ్జ్ దే మైట్ హావ్ ఎక్వైర్డ్ స్కిల్స్ టు విజువలైజ్ ఇట్ అండ్ దెన్ గాడ్ దోస్ థింగ్స్ అని అనిపిస్తుంది నాకు అంటే సిస్టమేటిక్ గా వాళ్ళు చాంటింగ్ చేయకపోయినా కూడా దే కెన్ స్టిల్ గెట్ ద నాలెడ్జ్ Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My, Thank you. my idea of that question is, uh, I have uh, permitted to talk. See, the, in the elder days, Brahma Vadini Lu, Vallu, Kankunar and Devan, they were founded. They found mm-hmm. it means at that time, the Niyama Nishtas were strictly followed by everybody. Even the ladies or gents, everybody used to follow the Niyama Nishtas. Some of them are Niyama Nishtas or used to follow strictly because of that, anybody is eligible at that time. But nowadays, uh, the, with the period of time, Yuga's change. By the time Yuga's right. change, Dharma Shastra started coming up into the picture. When they realized mm-hmm. that the people are not following the Niyama Nishtras correctly, so then they have given some restrictions. Okay, this, okay. Uh, these people, this should not be done, these people. Like that, they have given the restrictions. That's how this thing, development has happened. But otherwise, if even today, where a person, irrespective of the birth, if he is... it strictly follows the niyama nishtas as given by the rules of 42 shloka in ashtada uh, sachaya bhagavad gita if one can follow those rules in that 42 shloka he can do he can read either she or he or anybody he can do that uh, read the vedas but he should follow that 42 shloka strictly then he will be able to do it perfectly and okay. he will realize last, that perfect one last question we'll take it from you thank you andy uh guru ji i just want to ask you last uh, three weeks before i listen your lecture on the sri krishna in ujjain university parini so i just want to ask you that uh, lord krishna has came to the ujjain to learn the all the vedangs and uh, is, so this sutras were also at that time also means many subjects that came after that Well, after the 5,000 years, all were present at that time also in the accurate form, all the Vidyas. You are, you are muted. You are muted somehow. Yeah. The Vedas, the Vedas belong to the Satya Yuga or Krita Yuga. Then in Treta Yuga also, Vasishta, Vishwamitra, Sri Rama, all these had learned. In Dwapara Yuga, after several thousands of years, when it came to Sri Krishna, so sri krishna bhagwan when he took human form so he also studied them from sandipani ashram so this stated in the bhagavatam that's why already it was there before dwapara yuga in treta yuga they were there before treta yuga in the satya yuga they were there but only the upaveda were not there upaveda in different form like uh, uh, sri krishna also studied the dhanurveda shastrastra then he also studied the gandharva veda all the 
సిక్స్టీ ఫోర్ కలర్స్ అండ్ అష్టాదశ విద్య దేవర్ కామన్ టు ఆల్ బట్ నాట్ ఇన్ ద ఫామ్ వి ఫైండ్ నౌ లైక్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ సెంచరీ వన్ బుక్ ఈస్ ఫౌండ్ నౌ ద ఓల్డ్ బుక్ ఈస్ నాట్ ఫౌండ్ బట్ ద సైన్స్ వాస్ ప్రెసెంట్ దేర్ ద ఆర్ట్ వాస్ ప్రెసెంట్ దేర్ సో దిస్ వే హీ స్టడీడ్ ఓకే ఎక్స్పర్ట్ భరద్వాజ సో actually yantra sarvaswa this uh, vaimanika shastra is a chapter of yantra sarvaswa and uh, it is not mentioned in the ashtadasha vidya and there is another question antarinchina vedamulu malli pondagalama actually vedamulu antarinchaledandi vedamulu eppudu untayi manam antaristunnam ante madhyalo vastunnam madhyalo pothunnam kabatti vedalanu manam eppudaina pondagalamu కేవలం పాపులారిటీలో తేడా వస్తుంది ఒకప్పుడు ఎక్కువ మొత్తంలో వేదాలను చదివి తెలుసుకునే వాళ్ళు వైదిక కర్మల్ని అనుష్ఠించే వాళ్ళు ఉండొచ్చు కొంత కా ఒక్కొక్క కాలంలో ఉండకపోవడం జరగచ్చు ఇప్పుడు జొరాస్ట్రియన్ ఉంది అక్కడ పర్షియన్ ఆ ఏరియాలో అక్కడున్న పరిస్థితుల వల్ల రాజకీయ పరిస్థితుల వల్ల తగ్గిపోయింది కొన్ని కొన్ని జాతులు అంతే ఇప్పుడు జ్యూస్ వాళ్ళు ఇప్పుడు నెమ్మదిగా తగ్గుతూ వచ్చారు ఇప్పుడు హిందువులు దీనికి కారణం ఏంటి అంటే రాజకీయం కొంత మిగతా కారణాలు సో నా ఉద్దేశం ఏంటంటే వేదాలు శాస్త్రము జ్ఞానం ఇది అంతరించదు కేవలం వేరే వేరే రూపాలతో మళ్ళీ మళ్ళీ వస్తుంది మళ్ళీ వాళ్ళు వాళ్ళు ఆ స్థా కాలంలో వచ్చి వాటిని అధ్యయనం చేసి యథాశక్తి వాటికి ఏదో వికాసాన్ని దోహదపడతారనిపిస్తుంది ఓకే థ్యాంక్ యూ అండ్ వీ హ్యావ్ ఆల్రెడీ ఓవర్ షార్ట్ ద టైమ్ అండ్ పీపుల్ ఆర్ ఐ థింక్ లివింగ్ బట్ నా బట్ వి రిక్వెస్ట్ ప్రహ్లాద్ కుమార్ గారు టు సే ఫ్యూ వర్డ్స్ క్విక్లీ thank you sir am i audible sir yeah okay uh, the one thing is dintlo mahabharatam lo shlokam undi tarko apratishtah naikarishya yasya madam pramanam shrutayascha bhinnah ha tarat and akade em kitta ante dharmasya tattvam nehitam guhayam mahajana yena gata sa pantha ha ante dharma shastram anedi vedala tarvata ochinatundi shastralo tarvata ochina shastralo okati ganaka అది యుగ భేదాన్ని బట్టి మనవంతర భేదాన్ని బట్టి ధర్మశాస్త్రం మారుతూ ఉంటుంది కానీ ఆ అంటే ఆ యుగానికి సంబంధించిన ధర్మానికి తగినట్లు మారుతూ ఉంటుంది అందులోనే పరాశర ధర్మశాస్త్రము మన ధర్మశాస్త్రంలో పరాశర ధర్మశాస్త్రం ఈ యుగంలో పాటించాలని కూడా కొన్ని చోట్ల చెప్తూ ఉంటారు అందువల్ల ధర్మశాస్త్రం అనేది ఒకటి అన్ని యుగాల్లోకి సమానంగా అదే రూపంలో ఉంటుంది అనేది లేదు ఇంకోటి ఏంటంటే ఋషికల్లో కూడా అదికి ఒక సుప్తానికి ద్రష్ట అదికి దాక్షాయని ఇంకో సుప్తానికి ద్రష్ట అట్లాగే పౌలో నుంచి తెచ్చి ఇంకో సుప్తానికి ద్రష్ట అందులో కొంతమంది దేవతలే ద్రష్టలుగా ఉన్నటువంటి సుప్తాలు కూడా ఉన్నాయి అందువల్ల ఆ కాలంలో అప్పాల వీళ్ళంతా ఎట్లాగైతే ఋషికలుగా ఉన్నారో వాళ్ళు దర్శించిన సుప్తాల దగ్గర దగ్గర నలభై రెండు మంది ఋషికలు ఋగ్వేదంలో ద్రష్టలుగా ఉన్నారు అందువల్ల స్త్రీ పురుష భేదం లేదు ఇంకోటి ఏంటంటే పరమాత్ముడి తత్వంలో కూడా ఆయనకు స్త్రీ తత్వం కానీ పురుష తత్వం కానీ రెండు లేదు ఆయన రెండింటికి సమాయత్తమైనటువంటి వాడు అందువల్లనే మన దేవతల్లో కూడా బ్రహ్మ మాణి కానీ ఆ శివపార్వతులు కానీ లక్ష్మీనారాయణలు కానీ వాళ్లను నిత్య అవియోగినులు అంటే వాళ్ళు విడివిడిగా ఉండి విడివిడి వేర్పాటు అయ్యేటువంటి పరిస్థితులు ఉండవు అని అంటే పురుష తత్వం స్త్రీత్వం కలిసి ఉండ ఉన్నటువంటి ఒక సంయుక్త తత్వమే ఆ దేవతల స్వరూపం హిందువుడి శక్తి శచీదేవిగా వర్ణించబడింది కానీ హిందువుడు శచీదేవి వేరే కాదు ఆ రకంగా తీసుకుంటే స్త్రీలు అనేది తరా వచ్చినటువంటి ఎవల్యూషన్ లో సెపరేట్ అయినటువంటి ఒక క్రమమే గాని ఒరిజినల్ గా సృష్టి క్రమంలో స్త్రీలు పురుషులు విడివిడిగా లేరు అంతనే మన సంస్కృత భాషలో విభజనమే మొదట ఉండింది తర్వాత ఏకవచనం బహువచనం తర్వాత వచ్చాయని చెప్పి వేదిక్ లింగ్విస్టిక్స్ లో ఉంటుంది అట్లాగే వేదిక్ లింగ్విస్టిక్స్ లో కూడా ఋగ్వేదానికి ప్రాతిశాక్ష వేరే ఉంటుంది యజుర్వేదానికి రెండు యజుర్వేదాలకు ప్రాతిశాక్ష వేరే ఉంది అధర్మ ఏదో ప్రాతిశాక్ష ఉంది ప్రాతిశాక్షల ఆధారంగానే 
అది వాటిని తీసుకుని ఈ వేదానికి వ్యాఖ్యానం చెప్పాలి అని ఒకటి అంటే అక్కడ సాయనాచార్యులు చెప్పింది కూడా కేవలం అధియాంత్రిక పరమైనటువంటి వ్యాఖ్యానమే కానీ ఆయన నేను అన్ని రకాల వ్యాఖ్యానాలు చెప్పడం లేదు అని చెప్పి ఆయన స్వయంగా ఒప్పుకున్నాడు అట్లాగే తండ్రి చేసినటువంటి ఆ శివస్థుతిలో అధి పురుషం అధి వైజ్ఞానికం అధి లోకం అధి ప్రజా అని చెప్పి ఎనిమిది రకాల వ్యాఖ్యానాలు ప్రతి శ్లోకానికి చెప్పవచ్చు అని చెప్పి తండ్రి కృత శివస్థుతిలో ఉంది మహాభారతంలోనే అందువల్ల కేవలం ఒకే రెండు వ్యాఖ్యానాలు అధి అధిక వ్యాఖ్యానాలు పట్టుకొని వేదానికి వ్యాఖ్యానం అర్థమైంది అనుకుంటే తప్పవుతుంది వేరే వాళ్ళు చేసినటువంటి వ్యాఖ్యానాలు కూడా చాలా ఉన్నాయి ఆ వ్యాఖ్యానాలు అన్నింటినీ చూసుకొని సమగ్రంగా చెప్పగలిగితేనే చెప్పాలి అందువల్ల వేదానికి సప్త సప్త విధ భేదాలు వంద వంద నాలుగు రకాల రీతులు ఇన్ని అలంకార శాస్త్రం యొక్క అనువాదాలు ఇవన్నీ చూసుకొని అను అనువాదించుకొని కాగ్నిషన్ అంటే మనం ఏ విధంగా అర్థం చేసుకోవాలో అది కదా ప్రమాణ శాస్త్రాన్ని కూడా తీసుకోవాలి శబ్ద ప్రమాణం ఎట్లా తీసుకోవాలి శబ్దాన్ని ఏ విధంగా అర్థం చేసుకోవాలి రూఢి లక్షణ యోగ మహాయోగ లక్షణ రూఢి యోగ రూఢి విద్వద్ రూఢి మహాయోగ రూఢి అని ఇన్ని రకాల అర్థాలు చెప్పుకోవచ్చు అని చెప్పి ప్రమాణ శాస్త్రాలు చెప్పబడింది కనుక కేవలం ఒక నిరుక్తాన్ని చదువుకోను ఒక వ్యాకరణం చదువుకోను చెప్తే కుదరదు ఆనియన్ వ్యాకరణం వచ్చిన వ్యాకరణాల్లో కల్లా చాలా చివరి వ్యాకరణం అది అంతకు ముందు ఉన్నటువంటి వ్యాకరణాలు పదహారు రకాల వ్యాకరణాలు యుధిష్ట మీమాంస గారు ఆ సంస్కృత వ్యాకరణకి ఇతిహాసం చెప్పి ఒక పుస్తకం రాశారు దాంట్లో ఇన్ని రకాల వ్యాకరణాల గురించి చర్చ ఉంది అందులో వ్యాకరణము అది కాదు ధాతు రూపావళి అది కాదు పాణిని ఇచ్చిన ధాతు రూపావళికి భిన్నంగా పాణినే శిక్షలు ధాతువులు ఉన్నాయి అదేవిధంగా కొన్ని ధాతువులు మారిపోయిన అర్థం పశు ధాతువుకు పశు ధాతువు నుంచి చూడడం అనే అర్థం ఉంది అది తర్వాత పశు శబ్దంలో ఒక జంతువు అనే అర్థంలో నుంచి వాడబడింది తర్వాత అది కానీ ఒరిజినల్ గా మనం వైదిక వ్యాకరణానికి పోతే పశు ధాతువు నుంచి పశ్చితి వస్తుంది కానీ ఇంకోటి రాదు అట్లాగే ద్రక్ష్యాన్ని వస్తుంది కానీ ఇంకో రకంగా రాదు అందువల్ల దర్శనం అంటే దృష్టి ధాతువు నుంచి వస్తుంది పశు ధాతువు నుంచి పశు వస్తుంది అందుకే పశ్యక అనే దాన్ని తైతీరియ కారణంలో చెప్తాడు సహ సర్వం సౌక్ష్మ పశ్చతి సహ పశ్చక పశ్చక ఏ కశ్యప అని చెప్పి కశ్యపుడికి ఇంకో పేరే పశ్చకుడు అని ఆ విధంగా సర్వాన్ని చూసేటటువంటి సర్వసాక్షి అయినటువంటి ఆ ఎనిమిదో సూర్యుడే పశ్యకుడు ఆ పశ్యకుడే కశ్యపుడు అని చెప్పి తైతిరే అరణికలు చాలా స్పష్టంగా చెప్పబడింది మనకు మామూలుగా వేదంలో లేని వివరాలు చాలా వివరాలు తైతిరియ సంహితలో తైతిరియ బ్రాహ్మణంలో ఐతరేయ బ్రాహ్మణంలో తైతిరియ అరణ్యకంలో ఐతరేయ అరణ్యకంలో ఆరు అరణ్యకాలు వేరే ఉన్నాయి అది బ్రాహ్మణాలు ఉన్నాయి గోపత బ్రాహ్మణంలో అధర్వణ విధానం సంబంధించిన గోపత బ్రాహ్మణంలో ఇంకా ఎన్నో విషయాలు గాయత్రి మంత్రానికి ఇరవై నాలుగు అక్షరాలకు ఇరవై నాలుగు మంది ఋషులు ఇరవై నాలుగు వర్ణాలు ఇన్ని వివరాలు ఉన్నాయి కనుక అవన్నీ చూసుకొని అధారణ వేదంతో సహా కలిపి ఋగ్వేదానికి వ్యాఖ్యానం అర్థం చేసుకోవాలి కానీ మామూలుగా అర్థం చేసుకునే ప్రయత్నం చేయకూడదని నా మనవి థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఐ థింక్ నౌ వీ హావ్ ఓవర్ షార్ట్ ద టైమ్ లెట్ ఎస్ థ్యాంక్ ఆల్ ద పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ ఫర్ పార్టిసిపేటింగ్ అండ్ వీ హ్యావ్ ఎ వెరీ గుడ్ నెంబర్ టుడే అండ్ ఐ థింక్ ద స్పీకర్ హ్యాస్ లెఫ్ట్ ఈజ్ నాట్ దే maybe some network problem we will close us we will uh, go for uh, prarthana now yes sir shall i start uh, okay govind rajgar swasthe prajabhya paripalayantam nyayena margena mahi mahisha go brahmanebhya shubhamastu nityam loka samasta sukhino bhavantu కాలే వర్షతు పర్జన్య పృథివీ సస్యశాలినీ దేశోయం క్షోభరహితో బ్రాహ్మణా సంతు నిర్భయా అపుత్ర పుత్రిణ సంతు పుత్రిణ సంతు పౌత్రిణ అధనా సధనా సంతు జీవంతు శరదాం శతం సత్యం వద ధర్మం చర స్వాధ్యాయాన్మ ప్రమద సర్వే భవంతు సుఖిన సర్వే సంతు నిరామయా సర్వే భద్రాణి పశ్యంతు మా కశ్చిత్ దుఃఖ భాగ్ భవేత్ ఓం శాంతి 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 ఓం పూర్ణమద పూర్ణమిదం పూర్ణాత్ పూర్ణముదచ్యతే పూర్ణస్య పూర్ణమాదాయ పూర్ణమేవావశిష్యతే ఓం శాంతి 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 సర్వే జనా సుఖినో భవంతు స్వస్తి ధన్యవాదములండి రవీంద్రరాజ్ గారు
now uh, let us request krishna kumar garu to recite uh, national anthem please Janagana mana dhina yaka jaya he bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab sindh gujarat maratha dravida utkala vanga Vindhya himachala yamuna ganga utchala jaladhitaranga Tava shubha nami grahe Tava shubhashisha mange, gahe tava jaya gata. Jana gana mangala dayaka jaya he, bharata bhagya vidhata. Jaya he, jaya he, jaya he, jaya 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 he. Jaya he, jaya he, jaya he, jaya shri ram, jaya shri ram. Okay, thank you very much.